Hello. In this video, we're going to be talking about second order systems. We are going to be looking at second order systems, um, you know, calculating the response to a unit step input, and calculating things like delay time, rise time, and all those different performance factors for the response of a second order system. So a second order system can be written out like so, where we have our output over our input equals this omega squared divided by s squared plus two zeta omega times s plus omega squared, where omega is our natural frequency and our zeta is the damping ratio. This can be the bottom here, the denominator can be written like this, and then to a response to a unit step input, so the input here, so multiply the both side by R of S, and then in the S domain, a unit step input can be written as one over S. And if you want to figure out why that's the case, you can look at my video on Laplace transforms. And then you can do an inverse Laplace transform from this to this to get from the S domain to the time domain, and then this is our response to unit step input in our time domain. So I'm just introducing all these concepts. I'm not deriving it. Um, if you want to see documentation on how to derive this, I'm sure you can find it elsewhere, but I'm just presenting it to you. So and then this is what our representation on the S plane would look like. So we have our real axis, our imaginary axis. We have this omega here. So at every point along this dotted line, that would be a value of omega. If we break up the components of this arrow right here, we have zeta times omega, which also equals omega cosine beta. This angle in here is, is our beta angle. We have our, and then our, the real component is our damped frequency, which is our natural frequency times the square root of one minus zeta squared. All right, so for a response to unit step input, when plotted on time domain, it, can, it would look something like this, where this is a under damped system, that's why there's the oscillation. So it could be displacement or whatever, just some Y value. So it can be displacement, it could be anything really. So if you look back at our here for equation in the time domain, we have y of t. So we have y. So the, the oscillating part, that is our transient response. And then our steady state response is after that, after it stops oscillating. Where, I mean, this could be still oscillating, but very small. But this is our transient response is the bulk of the oscillation. And then, so this right here is after the settling time. I'll show you how to calculate the settling time. But for our system, we need ways of comparing the systems. So like again, again, let's go back here. This is our system, and this can be broken up of different values. So this is our second order system. But depending on the values in this transfer function here, the, the performance of our system can vary greatly. So, we have delay time, rise time, peak time, percent overshoot, and all these, and settling time. And now all these values, the performance of system can be determined by these values. And for some systems, you might want a very small percent overshoot, or you know, a very short you know, peak time, depending on what you want. Let's say your system is, let's say your air conditioning system in your house can be modeled as a second order system, let's say. And it's 50 degrees in your house, but you want it to be 70. So you turn it on, and then obviously the air gets hotter and hotter and hotter. But there's gonna be, so there's gonna be the, there's a, there'd be a rise time, which is the time it takes from get to 50 to 70. So let's say here, so this is our transient response, so it's getting hotter and hotter, hotter in the room. So let's say our, break even point here is 50 as a bottom, and this is our 70 degrees right here, let's say. So it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter to get to 70, so that's our rise time from zero to 100. And then 
it overshoots that though. And then the you know, then the system identifies that it's too hot, then it cools back down until it gets back to 70 degrees. Uh, but then it get, then it gets too cold, realizing it needs to get hotter, and then eventually though it will be at 70 degrees. So our rise time is to get from here to there. Our peak time is the time at the maximum value. So if we want our the house, let's say, to get from 50 to 70 degrees a lot quicker, we want obviously a shorter peak time. But the shorter peak time will probably result in a greater percent overshoot. But let's say we let's say there's something in the house that cannot get above like 71 degrees, let's say. Like it can be cold, but it can't be over 71 degrees. So you want you would want your air conditioning system to have a very low percent overshoot. But that will come at a sacrifice as a short, you know, rise time and a long or a long rise time, a long peak time. So you're kind of always depending on the performance you want, there's you have to make sacrifices in different situations. Moving on. So if you want to read the definitions for all those, you can pause it there. Um, so if settling time is the time required to get to 2% of the maximum final value. So whatever, 2% of 70 on top and 2% of 70 on the bottom. Once it's in between that range, that would be the 2% settling time. And then the 5% is 5% of 70 top and bottom. So. So here are all our equations for rise time, peak time, percent overshoot, 2% settling time, 5% settling time. And again, I'm not showing you the derivations of all these equations. If you want to find those, I'm sure you can find them in a textbook, but I'm just presenting them here. So the equations for settling time, or to get the values for the settling times and the percent overshoot are very simple because once you find your omega and zeta, you can just plug them all into these equations and get the values you want. The peak time is a little bit more confusing because we have the pi over our omega d. But remember, what is our omega d? That is omega squared of one minus zeta squared. And then for our rise time, this one is very important to get right. Because if you do our tan inverse of WD over a negative, if you just plug it into your calculator, you're, you're probably going to get the wrong value because of the quadrant you're in. So for tan inverse of negative, or the tan inverse in your calculator, if you're using like a TI-83, that is having it in the first quadrant, but we are in the second quadrant. So that's why you need to write it out as pi minus beta and divided by omega d, which we just talked about, is this value right there. So make sure, and also make sure that this is in radians. That's enough talk about the equations. Let's just do a quick example here. So we have our transfer function four divided by s squared plus s plus four. So how do we calculate our natural frequency? Again, we have omega squared equals, compared to this equation, equals four. Let's write this out one more time so we can see the comparison easily. So clearly, omega squared equals four. So we have omega equals two. And we have two zeta omega equals one plug two times zeta times two equals one. We get zeta equals 0.25. Okay, now we can, now we have enough to calculate settling times. So we got 2% settling equals four divided by zeta omega equals four divided by 0.25 times two that equals eight seconds. And then we have our 5%, which 
which equals 3 divided by zeta omega, which equals 3 divided by 0.25 times 2, and that, that equals 6 seconds. Okay. Now, let's, now we have those. Now we can find our percent overshoot. A little bit more complicated equation, but our, you can see our percent overshoot only is a function of our damping ratio. And that equals 44.43%. Now for peak time, and remember damped frequency is pi divided by the squared there, divided by 2 squared of 1 minus 0.25 squared, and that equals 1.6223 seconds. And then finally for our rise time, So, beta, okay, what's our beta? So we have beta here. So how do we, we wanna calculate beta? So we can use this relationship right here. Omegas cancel out and we can say cosine of beta equals zeta. So we know beta equals cosine negative one zeta. So we're gonna use that relationship here. should be plugging in, that should just be zeta, and also that should be zeta. Sorry, my bad. And this comes out to be one six seconds. So obviously you can plug this into, you can plug our second order system here as a transfer function into MATLAB, and then plot that as a response to our step input. So remember all of these are our first step inputs, Dies will be different for ramp inputs and other kind of inputs, but for step inputs, we can compare the performance of a second order system by using these equations. Pretty handy.